It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for Five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for Ten. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for Ten. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. And thank you, and welcome to the Science Bowl. We've got two wonderful middle schools to play our game here today as we begin our 35th season of competition here in the Prince George's schools. And we hope you play along with us and try to match wits with these outstanding students. You know, because of the pandemic and because schools are closed, we've brought all of, uh, we have all of our students at their homes where they're safe playing our game today. I'm in the studio here at Bonnie John's and we're going to have a reasonable facsimile of the normal science bowl. We don't have buzzers because we don't have uh, the way to make sure that everyone is on an even keel here. Uh, and we don't have all of the questions on the board, but each team will be getting 18 questions, different questions for each of the two teams playing today. We have Kenmore versus Benjamin Tasker, and they'll get three questions from each of our familiar categories, which are the following. Okay, Mr. Z, here's today's categories. Green things, questions about plants and all things green and growing. Zoo Parade, a Noah's Ark of questions about animals. Body systems, we'll see how much you know about yourself, about things like breathing and growing and digesting your food. Let's get physical. Questions that test your knowledge of physics and chemistry, earth science and space science. Then there's science potpourri. Here's a grab bag of science questions. Everything from air pollution to the kitchen zinc. And finally, Dateline Science. We'll ask you about science history and science in the news. We start our teams out with 50 points apiece. There are no penalties ever for incorrect answers. And the team that has the highest point total at the end of both rounds today, after both teams answer their 18 questions, will be the winner and go on to play Martin Luther King Jr. for the chance to become the first of our three semifinalists. Let's meet that team from Benjamin Tasker. They're ready and raring to go. Our team today is from Tasker, Braylon Marshall. Braylon, hey. you can wave to everybody. Hey, everybody. Victoria Taliano, there's Victoria. And Fian Idris, all here representing their school. And we will bring up the alternates and their coach as we get later on in the game. All right, are you all ready to start your questions? Yes? Yeah, we're Great. ready. All right, here we go. First questions from the green things category, a five point question. Here we go. Peter Peter, who in nursery rhymes was very fond of eating this largest member of the squash family of vegetables, had a wife but couldn't keep her. Does anybody know that? Uh, let's the see. Largest member of the squash family of vegetables. Okay. Who thinks it probably might be pumpkin? Okay, we agree with pumpkin. Is it pumpkin? Right? Braylon, that's the right answer. Peter Peeper, pumpkin eater, had a wife but couldn't keep her. Got yourself five points. That's the way to do it. Start it out right for 15 points in green things. Long before there were warning labels on cereals, the name of one cereal, cream of wheat, left no doubt it contained this allergen people are now trying to avoid. Do you guys know what that allergen is? Who thinks it might be wheat? Remember? Wait, wheat, wheat is in the question. The name of one cereal, cream of wheat, yes. left no doubt it contained this allergen. Okay, but who thinks it's... Go ahead. Okay, so you guys, who thinks it's wheat? Wheat, yeah, wheat. Okay, we think it's wheat. The correct answer was gluten. 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 The, the cereal is called cream of wheat and it contains the gluten. That's uh, why, you know, it left no doubt that it was in there. Oh, okay. okay. Sorry. You'll, you'll get your sea legs here. You're doing fine. Here's green things for 25 points. The world's tallest gymnosperm is the redwood. The world's tallest angiosperm is this Australian tree favored by the koala. The eucalyptus tree. 
Yeah, the eucalyptus tree. Yes, that is the only food that koalas eat. They have a very restricted diet. All right. Your next questions, the next three come from the zoo parade. Here's your five-point question. In India, a cat is said to be one of these indigenous predators that will eat from your hand. Do you guys know what that is? Did you listen to all the clues? In India, India. a cat is said to be one of these indigenous, indigenous predators that will eat from your hand. Okay, so listening to the clues, you guys, what do you think it might be? There were a lot of clues in there. The clues were India, cat, indigenous, predator. So does anybody have an idea of what it might be? Who, think it's, who thinks it's tiger? Braylon thinks it's tiger. He's right. He's right. You connected all the dots, Braylon. Perfectly done. Yes. Here's your 15-point question in Zoo Parade. Keep it up. Okay. Big word. Ornitho-rhynchus is the mm -hmm. genus name for this odd Australian marsupial that looks like it was put together from three or four different animals. Do you guys know what that is? Probably me. Oh, who thinks it's kangaroo? Wait, can you repeat the question? Ornitho-rhynchus, big word, is the genus name for this odd Australian marsupial that looks like it was put together from three or four different animals. Kangaroo. It's kangaroo. Yes, we think it's kangaroo. A kangaroo is indeed a marsupial, but it doesn't look like it was put together by, with three or four different animals. It's a duckbill platypus. You know, because it has the duck bill and it uh, looks like a beaver with a tail. So it's all, it was like a mishmash of different animals. All right, for 25 points, I have a visual question for you. Okay. And this beautiful bird is a hornbill. That hornbill, that bill is very, very heavy. So this bird has a very strong backbone with two A initial vertebrae fused together at the top of the spine to help hold up its bill. I'll give you 25 points if you can give me either one of the A initial vertebrae at the top of the spine that is helping to hold up that heavy bill. Victoria, Fian, do you guys know the answer? Either A initial bone. A only has to be one, not two. Only one, only one. Only one. So... You said, I had it for, and then I forgot it. Fian, I can't hear you, honey. Would you speak up more? I had it for a second, and then I forgot it. Come on. Okay, Fian, it's an it's a it's a vertebrate that starts with the letter A, and it holds up the two the hornbill's bill. Do you at least remember what it ends with? You know, if you know your human anatomy, the bone holding up your skull. It's yeah. like the man who holds up the earth on his shoulders, Atlas. It's uh -huh. called the Atlas bone and the Axis bone. Those are the two. Okay. Right. That was a tough question. Let's that go was. to your, your last three questions before we take a break, the body systems questions. For five points in body systems, if you have to do something, although it will make you feel ashamed or embarrassed, you got to do it. You are said to be forced to swallow your what? You guys know this. You got to swallow your... You got to do it even though you're embarrassed or ashamed. You're forced to swallow your what? Good. Your pride. You swallow your pride. 15 points. Even if you suspect a heart attack victim is suffering from COVID-19, don't hesitate to begin this life-saving maneuver. CPR. Uh, CPR. Yeah, CPR. We think it's CPR. You got that one. You got it. Good. Thanks, you Victoria, for your help on that. And your last question before we take a break, body systems for 25. If your doctor suggests that you take an antipyretic like Tylenol, he or she is hoping to reduce your what? Victoria, you know this? Or Fian? You said blood sugar, Fian? No, not blood sugar. You said, okay, it's blood what now? 
You have to speak up. I can't really hear you. We can't hear you. Blood pressure. You're going to have to yell it. Blood pressure. She said blood pressure. Blood pressure. What do you guys think about that? Blood pressure, Victoria. It's good. Correct answer there was fever, but you still had a good round. You're now at 100 points, Benjamin Tasker. It's now time for our second team. They hail from Kenmore Middle School to get their first nine questions. Let's meet them. First of all, would you please say hello to Eleanor Finch. Wave to everybody, Eleanor. Hello. Cheyenne Souvenir is here hello. as well. And the captain is Ayush Dabaria. Hi, Ayush. Nice to have you guys here today. And thank you for volunteering to do this. This is not easy. You didn't have to do this. But here you are, you're putting yourselves out here. You're great science students and you're great representatives from Kenmore Middle School. So uh, I have nine questions for you. First three will be from the green things category. If you're ready, let's go. Here's your first question worth five points in green things. Besides crystal balls, fortune tellers read palms and the leaves of this caffeine rich plant. It's tea. Yeah, tea, tea leaves. leaves is right, Eleanor. Thank you for 15 points. A new book titled Slime is a detailed look at these most abundant plants in the sea. Uh, it's either, I think, it, I think it's algae. Al do you guys agree? Al oh, algae, that sounds right. Yeah, what do you think, Cheyenne? I agree, that's fine. Do you agree? I like how you're all checking with each other. Algae is the correct answer. Green things for 25 points. While the clear and thin substance from a maple tree is called sap, the thick, gooey, amber-colored substance from pine trees that is used for making turpentine is called this. Tar. Not sap, but what? Tar, I'm pretty sure. What do you think? Tar? Uh, I have uh, what do you Captain, think? what do you think? Do you have any idea? Cheyenne, do you agree with tar? We can You're gonna go with tar. Uh, good guess, good guess. Correct answer is resin, resin, R-E-S-I-N. Let's move on to the zoo parade category for five points. While Spider-Man, Ant-Man, and Batman are all superheroes named for animals, none arguably has had the impact of this one, the King of Wakanda. Black Panther. Black, Black, Black Panther. Black Panther is correct, yes, for 15 points. You can tell from its face that looks like a parabolic dish that this is the only bird that uses ultrasound to hunt its prey. Think carefully. A face that looks like a parabolic dish shows you that this is the only bird that uses ultrasound to hunt its prey. Do you know Cheyenne? No. Ultrasound. If you've ever looked at an owl, an owl's face is a parabolic dish. So when it sends out ultrasound, ultrasonic sounds, it reverberates and it makes a picture of where that mouse is hiding in the leaves. Oh. For 25 points, last question in Zoo Parade. In Marvel Comics, there are certain extraterrestrials like Venom that form mutually beneficial relationships with superheroes like Spider-Man and have what same name as real life earthly creatures that form these mutually beneficial relationships? Symbiotic, I think. Symbiotic. Thank you, Eleanor. Symbiotics or symbiotes is the correct answer. Nicely, nicely done. All right, we move on to your body system questions for five points. Since these molars in your jaw often grow sideways or are impacted, you might say that they aren't very smart, even though they are known as these kinds wisdom of teeth. Wisdom, wisdom teeth. Yeah, you wisdom. all know wisdom teeth. I hope you don't have to have yours cut out like I had had mine cut out years ago. They, they were going in all kinds of different directions. 15 points in body systems. COVID temperature checks, as you know, are often done using the forehead or the wrist with thermometers that are sensitive to this form of radiation. You have any idea, Cheyenne? Since the blood is giving off heat, heat is infrared. Infrared was the form of radiation. And for 25 points, last one in this category. 
Washington football player quarterback Alex Smith, who broke both lower legs on a tackle and nearly lost his leg and his life, did so because flesh-eating bacteria invaded his body. It caused which of the following conditions? Sepsis, cirrhosis, or tetanus? Tetanus is an infection you get after rust, I think. That's like a rust infection, That's so I don't think it's that. I think it's sepsis. Your choices again are sepsis, cirrhosis, or tetanus, flesh-eating bacteria invading the body. I think, sepsis, I think it's either sepsis or cirrhosis. Well, I, I think it's sepsis. I think. If you're going with sepsis, you made the right choice. Sepsis is right. You got yourself 25 points. So it means, Kenmore, you now have 130 points after the first round. Welcome back, everybody. Well, uh, we've got the team from Benjamin Tasker back, and let's find out a little bit about our players before we ask any more scientific questions. Let's go to the captain and Braylon. Braylon, you really know your stuff. You know yeah. your science backwards and forwards. How how do you get to be such a good student? I don't know. I just obey what the teachers say, do good, don't get out of hand. Basically, if you do what you're told, good things will come to you. Boy, you can put that and etch it in stone. And if everybody follows that, you're going to have a good life. You have a great personality. Yeah. What do you want to do someday? I don't know. Probably like be like a scientist or a chef, probably. Either one of those now. Yeah. And include some communications in there, too, you know, because you're a great speaker and I like your discipline and you're, you're just a great guy, a good representative of Tasker. Uh, tell me who your coach is. She's a great lady. My coach is Mrs. Freeman. Mrs. Freeman. She has worked so hard to get you guys ready for this. And who's the principal at your school? Uh, Dr. Hill. Dr. Hill. And did you have any alternates on your team? I think you do. Yes, I do. Who are they? Can you give me their first names? Sure. Those alternates are Arna, Stevens, and Lauren. Wonderful. And we'll bring them out at the end of the program here. And um, let's go on and meet your teammates. Let's go out to Victoria. Victoria, tell us a little bit about yourself. What do you do in your spare time? Uh, I just like to relax after finishing my work. Absolutely. Yeah, because you're an excellent student and I can see, you know, that you put in a lot of time and sometimes you just need to put your feet up afterwards. What do you want to do someday, Victoria? Uh, I really don't know. I haven't thought about it too much. Yeah, that's what is good about this game. Sometimes you hear things and see things that might give you an idea about what you might want to do in life because you never know when that epiphany is going to come be a TV show. It can be meeting somebody. It can be uh, a movie you see. So keep yourself uh, open to all those suggestions. Good to have you here today. And Fian, Fian, we've had trouble hearing you, but uh, it's good to have you here today. Tell us the Fian story. Uh, what do you want to do someday? I want to be an engineer. An engineer. So you must be a very good math student in addition to being a good science student. Where are you sitting? Is this your room at home? Yeah. And how has it been as a classroom? Because if you've been going to school in this same room, are you anxious to get back to the real building or is this working for you? I want to go back to the school because like too much light of my eyeballs, it makes my head hurt. Yeah, that nothing replaces the real thing, but you're, you're a trooper to do this and to be such a good student that you are. All right. Let's get back into the game here. And the last time we were here, uh, let's see, we uh, had finished up with the body system question. So I have nine more questions for you. The first three will come from Let's Get Physical. You guys ready? Yeah. Yeah. Braylon, he's got the spirit. He's got the fighting let's spirit. Let's up our game, team. Yeah. Okay. The, he's, he's, he is the coach for a reason. Here's let's up our point. game. Here's your five-point question. Author Isaac Dennison wrote, that the cure for anything is this substance, which can be found in your tears, in your sweat, and in the ocean, and has the formula NaCl. It's sodium chloride, which is sodium a name chloride. for salt. Another salt. name for salt. You got it. Perfect. That's the way to start. 15 points, mm -hmm. physical. NASA's Dawn mission visited two places called Vesta and Ceres two large bodies that orbit in this belt between Mars and Jupiter. 
Do you Vesta and Ceres are bodies that orbit between Mars and Jupiter in this belt. Do you guys know what this is? It's called the asteroid belt. Those where you find all. I thought. I thought. Wait. I thought the asteroid belt would be like between the sun, right? Nope. Nope. Between Mars and Jupiter is where most oh. of the Mars. And some of those asteroids are actually bigger than Pluto. Oh. Here's your twenty-five point question. It's a visual question. Okay. All right. If you like frogs, you'll like this little guy. He's kind of neat. Some frogs are now able to camouflage themselves mm -hmm. because they have skin that lets light through partially, meaning the skin is not transparent. It's not opaque. It's this, a Trans term that means to let light pass through partially. Do you think it's translucent, you guys? Uh... Okay, we think it's translucent then. It is translucent. You got those 25 yes. points. And Braylon is jumping out of his skin there. He needed those points. All right, guys. Yeah, I need those going. points. <laughs> Here is science potpourri for five points. The mayor of Los Angeles, his name is Eric Garcetti, mm -hmm. was sitting talking about the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. He said, you know, our fight against the virus is a real life version of STEM class because we're forming hypotheses. We're collecting data. We're analyzing results. Quite simply, we all are using the scientific what? Method. Yes, for five points. Good answer. 15. This term describes a body at rest wishing to remain at rest. And it's also a synonym for sluggishness. People that don't like to move a lot, they're sluggish. What word describes that? And a body at rest wanting to stay at rest. Fatigue. Say it again. Fatigue. No. Any other ideas there? Probably like laziness. Laziness is a good try. It's called inertia. 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 That comes from Newton's laws of motion. Let's try this next question for 25 points in potpourri. While some COVID vaccines, we know, you know they're testing vaccines for COVID. We've now entered the challenge phase where everybody in the trial gets infected with COVID. They volunteer to get COVID. And then they get these vaccines to see which ones work. So they're really taking a chance. But most of the trials, the vaccine is given to some subjects while others get the equivalent of a sugar pill. They don't know they're not getting the real vaccine. That sugar pill is known by what P initial term? You guys know what this is? I think it's... Gian, what do you think it is? Penicillin. Penicillin, we think it is. Penicillin is a good try. It's called a placebo, a placebo. So if you get a placebo, you think you're getting the real thing so that you don't start to say, oh, I feel better when in fact it wasn't caused by that medication that you were given. All right, try your dateline for five points. This is pretty disgusting. Sewage treatment plants are now tracking the coronavirus through poop. Turns out that there are bits of the virus's genetic material, specifically this kind of nucleic acid that, that remains inside of feces. Not DNA, but this. Anybody know what that is? RNA. RNA. You got it, Fian. The RNA is in the poop. Charming. RNA. All right, for 15 points, here's your question. Let's get this one. I know you know this, man. Yeah. Here's a quote. He said, the good thing about science is it's mm -hmm. true whether or not you believe it. So said this famous astrophysicist who is the host of NOVA on PBS. Who knows this? Uh, Neil see. deGrasse Tyson. Neil deGrasse Tyson. He is that, he, he's a great entertainer. He's a great scientist. Here's your 25 point question in Dateline. The Food and Drug Administration is warning us that some hand sanitizers are dangerous. Instead of containing ethyl alcohol or isopropyl alcohol, they contain a deadly form of alcohol known as wood alcohol or by this M initial name, an M initial kind of alcohol that is deadly and should not be in hand sanitizers. Tough question. Any idea what that M stands for? She said, Fian said methane, right? Right? 
methane. Methane is so close, so close. It's methanol or methanol. methyl alcohol. We would have taken Why? either one. And oh, Finn, she said, oh, now I knew that one. That means you end the game with 140 points. Congratulations. Now we have the Kenmore team back with us for their second set of questions, but we also want to find out a little bit about them. They're great kids, come from great school. And Ayush, you're the captain there. Uh, tell us about your school. Who's your principal? Our principal is Maha Fadili, Miss Maha Fadili. Yes, and she has been there for many years, and she takes great pride in Kenmore's science ball team as well. She should. And who is the coach of your team, Ayush? Our coach is Miss Novick. Absolutely. Ms. Novick and Beth, thank you for all that you've done to get the team ready here. Just as we thank Aris Freeman for all she did to get her students ready here. And did you have some alternates on the team? I think you do. Who are they? Yes, we have Kaylin and Hannah as our alternates. Wonderful. And I know there's out in the wings there. We're going to bring them back in at the end of the program. I know they work very hard to get ready for this game, just as you did. Tell me what it is about this game that you like, Ayush. Why do you, you want to do this? I like the competition and I really like science, so it's the perfect game for me. It's a perfect match. Indeed it is. What do you hope to do someday, young man? I hope to be an anesthesiologist. Why? Why so? Because I I want to help people and I like I want to help people in the biggest way. And I don't wanna well I do I would have lives in my hands, but I wouldn't have as much in my hands as a surgeon would. So it's the closest thing as I can. It is still a great responsibility, keeping people uh, uh, alive while they are under anesthesia. You'll be very good at that. Uh, let's talk to your teammates there, Eleanor. Eleanor, nice to have you with us today. Eleanor, you seem to be able to really jump on a lot of these questions. How do you know so much science? Um, well, uh, I was actually, I've been on the science pool before. I'm not sure if you remembered. What school but, were you with? Uh, I was with Judith P. Hoyer. Oh, the Montessori school. Yeah. Yes. Now we do remember you. Yes. Uh, and Miss Strong, I think, is the it was your coach. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well. Well. All now that I remember you, and thank you for jogging my memory. Uh, what yeah, do you have okay. to do someday? What do you want to do someday, Eleanor? I want to be an author. I want to write books. <laughs> have you ever participated in the write a book contest here? No, I don't think I have. That's What's something that? you should investigate. Um, uh, we get submissions and we award you medals and a lot of participants go on to fame. A lot of people go on and become a, a professional journalist. So I'll give you some details about that later. I'll tell, I'll go it through Ms. Novak so that you make sure you get that. Uh, where are you sitting? Is that your room? Uh, yes, this is my bedroom. It's, it's your bedroom. Is, is it also your classroom now? Uh, yep. <laughs> <laughs> So good to have you here today. Cheyenne, let's talk to Cheyenne. Cheyenne, why did you want to do this? Why did you want to be on the science bowl team? Um, I've been wanting to do this for like a few years now. And I've never done it before. So it would be a new experience and I like science. Well, uh, we're glad you're here. Where'd you go to elementary school? Heather Hills. Heather Hills, yeah. Heather Hills has played uh, infrequently here. They were one of our original schools way back 35 years, but and we have seen them a few times since. Uh, what do you do in your spare time? Um, I like to draw and paint, and I cook and bake a lot. Yeah. What do you like to bake? Uh, I mainly make cakes, cookies. Ah, do you make chocolate chip cookies? Mm -hmm. mm. I'm tasting chocolate chip cookies when you said you you bake. And what do you want to do someday? I think I might want to be an astronomer because I've always loved space. Wow. And did you did had you heard of Neil deGrasse Tyson? Yeah. Because we had used that in a question with the other team. Well, congratulations on being here and good luck in this next part of the program. All right, let's get back to the questions here. And uh, are you guys ready? Nine more questions. Here it is, you can do it. Let's go to the let's get physical questions, Ken Moore. For five points, we start out with a visual question. This is the stuff of nightmares, flying snakes. This paradise green snake can glide from tree to tree by flattening its body to provide this force. As it flattens its body, it provides its body with what force that lets it glide? Lift, right? Lift. Lift is right, indeed. Can Im imagine that, walk outside and seeing a snake fly? No, thank you. For 15 points and let's get physical. The acid in a car's lead acid battery is a dilute form of 
the acid with the formula H2SO4. H2SO4 is otherwise known as this kind of acid. Sulfuric acid? You got it, Ayush. It is sulfuric yeah, you're acid. Yeah, at the periodic table. Yes. Oh, perfect. Yeah, that S in there was your clue. And another visual for 25 points we're bringing up for you. There's a saying that if you're feeling really happy, you're on cloud nine. That's because back in 1896, this cloud, the tallest kind of cloud on earth, was designated cloud nine. Can you name this kind of cloud? Cumulonimbus? Say it again, Eleanor. Cumulonimbus? You got that right. Perfect. We're going to sign you up as a guest weather forecaster. Cumulonimbus is right. We move on new to the now to the potpourri category. Five points. Coffee cups in space use what same gravity-defying method that you've seen that causes red-colored water to move up a celery stem. Can you repeat the question? I can. Coffee cups in space, because you know you can't drink coffee, it would just float away. It uses, this coffee cup uses the same gravity-defying method that you have seen that causes red-colored water to move from a dish up a celery stem in defiance of gravity. Maybe magnets? I don't know. I don't know why there would be magnets in water. Suction? That, that is, I, I, would, I was hoping maybe you had seen your teacher do this at some point. It's called capillary action, where the water molecules adhere to each other in a very tiny space. So it forces up and it beats gravity. Try this next one for 15 points. Since bumblebee populations are declining, get this, some farmers are experimenting with soapy bubbles as an alternative way to do this for their pear trees. Uh, keep bugs away, like put pesticides, like maybe instead of pesticides. If you listen carefully, I started out by saying since bumblebee populations are declining, it's for pollination. They're using ah. these soapy bubbles to actually pollinate the pear tree blossoms. For 25 points, we all saw and we were horrified that Notre Dame Cathedral was burning. Here's your question. Scientists that are skilled in this A initial specialty are trying to ensure that the sounds in the fire damaged Notre Dame Cathedral will reverberate in the new church as they did in the old. What is the A initial specialty that is all about sound? Have you ever heard of acoustics? Acoustics. There are acoustics engineers. I have three more questions for you. Dateline for five points. This is a very interesting story. Follow it and you'll get the answer. This is not the first pandemic. In the 1957 Hong Kong flu, the lead doctor, Maurice Hillman, discovered that to make his flu vaccine, he needed fertile chicken eggs, fertile chicken eggs. So he asked all of America's chicken farmers, please do not kill these particular birds. Roosters? Yeah, don't kill the roosters. If you kill the roosters, there's going to be no fertilization. Good answer. 15 points under Dateline. Thomas Edison's bitter rival was this man, whose name Elon Musk has given to his all-electric cars. Oh, Tesla. Yeah. Yeah, Tesla. That's right. Oh, they were bitter enemies. So, yeah, uh, Musk is kind of getting Tesla his due. Last question for you. Dateline for 25 points. Let's go out in style. Let's get this one. A new silver dollar has been issued by the U.S. Mint honoring this teacher who died aboard the Challenger spacecraft when it exploded back in 1986. Maybe you read about her. She was from New Hampshire. Can you name that teacher who died when the space shuttle exploded? The correct answer there was Krista McAuliffe. And uh, that means at the end of this round, Kenmore, the end of your game, you have 195 points. 
and we will be right back in a moment to tell you who today's winner is and who will be moving on to take on Martin Luther King for a chance to become a semifinalist. Don't go away. Well, it was a great game. It was a competitive game, just as we imagined, because we had six outstanding young people playing our game here today. I might add, not only six wonderful science students, but six outstanding sportsmen, and uh, they played their game beautifully here. It is not easy to do this. Our final tally today is Benjamin Tasker, 140, Kenmore, 195, which means Kenmore, congratulations to you. Let's give them a nice round of applause. A round of applause for Kenmore. And right behind them at 140 was Benjamin Tasker. Let's clap for Benjamin Tasker. Super job here. I know you guys put in a lot of work. So Kenmore, you're going to be playing Mark Luther King for the chance to move on. And we want to make sure that everyone gets acknowledged here. We have some alternates out there. Hannah, would you wave to everybody, please? And Kaylin, both alternates from Kenmore. And the two alternates from Benjamin Tasker, Laura, Laura in London, and Arna Gumbel. And did I leave anybody out? I see somebody over there on the side. And what is, who is that person? Steven. Steven. Like alternate and from Benjamin Tasker. Steven at Benjamin Tasker. Thank you all for being here and thank you for watching. I hope you stay with us during this extraordinary year. We're going to keep bringing you Science Bowl on Zoom. It's not quite the same as being in the studio, but it does give us the chance to showcase some outstanding young people and we're proud of them all. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>